Hi guys! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to knit the Little Hearts Fair Isle mitten pattern. You, I'm using the magic loop method but you could also use double pointed needles. Um, I've already finished my cuff which was just eight rows of knit one purl one rib. So now I'm on round nine and my main color is this white color here so I'm just going, going to knit eight stitches and then do an increase. So I'm doing a make one left. So to do a make one left, I'm going to pick up this horizontal bar that goes between the last stitch on my needle and the last stitch on my right needle. I'm going to pick it up from the front to the back and then knit through the back of that stitch. And then I'm going to knit one. I'll show you that again because it's the exact same for the other side. So I'm just going to knit eight again. And do it and make one left. So again, you want to pick up that horizontal bar that runs between your stitches. Pick it up with your left needle from the front to the back and place it on your needle and then knit through the back loop and knit one. So that was round nine. Now we have 20 stitches on our needles and we're going to start our fair isle pattern. So I'm using white for my main color and then I'll be using gray for my contrasting color. So I'm just going to knit three and then knit one with my contrasting color. To join the contrasting color, I just start knitting with it. And I like to pull the tail through the cuff of the mitten so I can tighten that up a little bit. Okay, so that was one with the contrasting color. And we're just going to keep repeating this. Three with the main color. And one with contrasting. All the way around. So I like to carry my main color in my right hand and my contrasting in my left, but you could, you, you could hold both in your right hand or both in your left hand, or if it's easier you could just pick up and put down whatever yarn you're not currently using. I've just found that this is a little bit easier for me. Okay, so that was round 10 and round 11 we're just going to knit around with the main color. I'm just going to tighten up that first gray stitch a little bit. Get some more yarn. And that was round 11. So round 12, we'll be back to the fair isle pattern. This round's a little different. We're going to stagger these little contrasting colored stitches. So we're going to knit one with the main color, and then knit one with our contrasting color, and two with the main color, and then keep repeating. One, one. So really there's three main color stitches between every contrasting color stitch. What did I do here? Lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. So that was round 12. 
So the next round, we're going to increase again, but a little bit differently. We're going to start our thumb gusset increases. So basically, we're just increasing along the sides of our mitten to make room for our thumb. So we're going to knit to the last stitch on our marker, and we're going to do a make one right, which is a little bit different than the make one left we did before. So this is round 13. I'm going to knit 9. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to place a stitch marker. And then we're going to make one right. So to make one right, we're again going to pick up that horizontal bar that runs between stitches. And I'm going to pick it up from the back to the front this time, like so. And then we're going to knit through the front of the loop. And then we're just going to knit this last stitch. And turn our work. And then we're going to make one left, just like we did before. So I'm going to pick up that horizontal bar. Make sure you're picking up the main color and not the gray contrasting color. This one, for a make one left, we're going to pick it up from the front to the back and then knit through the back of that loop. Oh, and then we need to place one more gusset marker and then knit to the end of our round. So for each increase round, which will be every other round, we'll be knitting just we'll be increasing just along the insides of our stitch markers. Okay, so round 14 is not an increase round, but it is a fair isle round. Okay, in round 14, we have to talk about tacking our floats. If you don't know what a float is, here's a mitten turned inside out. The floats are the long contrasting colored strands of yarn that run along the inside of your knitting when you're knitting Fair Isle. And if they're too long, say the long wider than three or four stitches, your fingers will get stuck in them when you're trying to put your mitten on. So we don't want them any longer than three stitches at the most. That means we don't want them to span the main um, three main color stitches, more than three main color stitches. So it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. So my last contrasting color stitches was, it was two stitches to the end of that last Fair Isle round. And let's see, for round 14, we need to knit three with the main color. So that would mean it would span five stitches and that's gonna be too long. So I'm just gonna knit one and then I'm gonna tack my float into this next stitch. So I'll show you how to do that. You just go into the stitch as if to knit lay your contrasting color yarn on top of your needle, don't knit with it, and then bring your main color around to knit like normal and knit the stitch. So it's basically just twisting the two yarns together and then when you knit your next stitch it will lock your contrasting colored yarn into place. Kind of locks it right into this stitch here. And you can't see it from the front but it's tucked in there nice and tight so that your float is nice and short. And I'll show you how to do that again in just a minute. So this is round 14. I knit three with the main color. I'm going to knit one contrasting color. Repeat that again. Three and one. In this next part we need to knit five with the main color, which means that's too many stitches for our contrasting color to span again. So I'm going to tack it into this third stitch here. So I'm going to knit one, slip my marker, knit two, and then I'm going to tack my float here. So just bring your right needle into the stitch to knit like normal. Lay your contrasting color yarn on top of the needle and knit with your main color like normal. And then when we knit our next stitch, it will be locked into place. So that was three main color stitches. I need to do two more. There's one. Slip my marker again. My little pumpkin pie marker. And then we're going to knit one with the main uh, with the contrasting color. And keep repeating our pattern 
until the end of the round. Okay, so that was round 14. Round 15 will be just like round 13. We're going to knit, slip our marker, make one right, knit to the next marker, make one left, and knit to the end of the round. So we'll just keep repeating an increase round followed by a fair aisle round until there are seven stitches in between your gusset marker and then I'll show you what we do next. Welcome back. I just finished round 18 and so for round 19 we are going to separate the thumb stitches from the body of the mitten. So we should have seven stitches between our gusset marker now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're just going to knit to our marker and place those seven stitches on a piece of scrap yarn. Okay, so this is round 19. So with the main color, we're going to knit nine. Oops, four, five. So we just knit to our marker. We're going to take that marker off. And we're going to thread a yarn needle with a piece of scrap yarn. And we're going to thread the next four stitches onto the yarn. And then we'll turn our work and thread the other three stitches before our, our marker on the yarn as well. So all seven are on the yarn. I'm going to take off this last stitch marker, turn the work back around, and we're going to cast on one stitch right next to the last stitch that we knitted. And to do that, we're just going to do a backwards loop cast on. So I just like to grab the yarn in my hand, bring my thumb under and around, and then slide my needle under that loop and onto the needle and tighten it up. So let me show you that one more time. So I just hold the yarn, the main color yarn, with my fingers, bring my thumb under and around and slide it onto the needle. So we cast on one extra stitch that'll bring us to 10 stitches on each needle if you're using the magic loop method. Okay, then we just knit to the end of our round here. So now we'll just be knitting the body of the mitten, and you can either refer to the Fair Isle chart at this point, or just keep following the written instructions. We're just going to keep repeating a plain knit round like we just did with a Fair Isle round. And just be sure to tack any floats that are longer than three stitches. So not this round, but the Fair Isle round after that, you'll want to tack that first stitch. Okay, I'll see you back here when it's time to decrease. Welcome back. I just finished round 31, and we're ready to start the decreases. So with our main color, first we're going to slip, slip, knit. And there are a couple different ways to do this, but I like to go, I like to slip the first stitch knit-wise, then the second stitch purl-wise, and then bring my left needle back through the front of both stitches and knit them together. And then, this is round 32, so we're going to knit three with our main color. I'm going to tack my float into this next stitch, like so. Knit one with contrasting. Knit two, and then we're going to knit two together with our main color. So to do that, we just bring our right needle through the front of both stitches and knit them together. Then we're going to turn our work and do the same thing again. Okay, so with the main color, we're going to slip, slip, knit. I'm actually going to try and tack my float into this one too because it's already got three stitches it needs to go go by there. Okay, so slip the first stitch knitwise, slip the second stitch purlwise, then bring my left needle through the front and knit them together. 
knit one with a contrasting, or main color, sorry, knit one with contrasting, three with main color, one with contrasting, and then knit these last two stitches together. Okay. And then we are done with our contrasting color yarn, so we can go ahead and cut that and get that out of the way. I just like to tuck that down into the mitten to keep it out of the way for now. Okay, so everything from this point on will be with main color. We're going to slip slip knit again. Knit until we have two stitches left. Knit two together. We'll do the same thing on this side. Slip, slip, knit. Knit one, two, three, four. Knit two together. And then the last round, one more round of decreases. Slip, slip, knit, knit two, knit two together, and same for the other side. Slip, slip, knit, knit two, knit two together. Okay, I'm just going to cut my yarn and then I thread it onto my yarn needle and then bring that through all remaining eight stitches. that nice and tight and I'm not going to weave in all the ends right now but I like to pull I like to tuck this one right through the center of where I cast off those stitches and bring my yarn needle through and pull it nice and tight okay now the fun part we're gonna knit the thumb okay so if you remember we set aside seven stitches onto some scrap yarn here we have to put all of those back on our needles and then pick up one more stitch and then knit in the round. So I like to pick up the first three stitches, thread those back onto my needle, just the first three, if you're using the magic loop method, and then pull your cable through so that the stitches slide up to the other needle. Turn our work and pick up the last four just to keep them kind of evenly divided here. And then once those are on our cable, we can pull our scrap yarn out. Turn our work back around so we have the three stitches facing us. And we're going to pick up one stitch. So we are going to pick up one stitch right where we cast one on after we separated the thumb. So that's this white stitch right here. Let's see if I can zoom in here. So we're going to pick up right underneath this cast on stitch right here. Right through that white bar, not the gray one, the white one right underneath the gray one. So, a little twist in here. So let's focus this camera, hopefully. Okay. I'm going to put my needle right through that white stitch and the little bar that's right underneath it. So it's kind of going under two bars here, like so. And then I'm gonna take my main color and just wrap it around my needle and pull it through. If that's a little tricky to do, you could always use a crochet hook just to get that first stitch started. And then we're just going to knit all the stitches on our needles. So knit one round with main color. 
Oops. Thumb gets a little fiddly. Once you get a couple rows in, it's not so bad. Okay, and then tighten up that tail that you use to pick up your stitch. And I like to just pull it into my thumb hole to keep it out of the way. And then you can tighten it up in a couple rows again. Oops. Okay, so that was round one of the thumb section. Round two, we're gonna get we're gonna knit two with our main color. Make sure this is back in focus here. And then we're gonna knit one with our contrasting color. And another tail I just like to tuck into the thumb hole. Okay, and then knit one with main color, and then we'll repeat the same thing on this side. Knit two with main color, and knit one with our contrasting color. Okay, so that was round two. Round three, we'll just knit around with our main color. And we'll just keep continuing our fair aisle pattern for eight rounds, and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, I just finished round eight of my thumb, and round nine, just with the main color, we're going to do our decreases. So we can cut our contrasting color yarn. And we're going to do the decreases just like we did the top of the mitten. So we're just going to slip, slip knit and then knit two together. And do that one more time. Slip, slip, knit, and knit two together. Okay, then we just cut our yarn and we'll thread our tail through those last four stitches. Tuck this contrasting color into that little thumb. Okay. Just thread that through. And pull that nice and tight. Okay. And then we'll just weave in our ends like normal. But I wanted to show you how I weave in around the thumb hole to close that up. Because if you'll notice, there's a pretty significant hole here on, our, on, on the sides of our thumb. So I'll show you what I do there. So I've got to turn the whole thing inside out, which is a little easier said than done. Okay. We have a lot of ends to weave in, but I'm just going to show you how to do this one end here. So we take our white yarn tail, the main color tail, and we're going to weave it around this hole right here. See the big hole? We're just going to weave through this stitch on the side. Hopefully you can see that. And then back up through this stitch here. And that closes up that gap. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And close up that gap. And that's it. Then we're just going to, I just weave in my ends through my knit stitches like so. And trim them. And there are a lot of ends to weave in, so I'm not going to show you all of those. But that's the gist. And then you will have a nice little fair isle mitten. 
I hope you found this helpful and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials. Thank you!